I start, I've got a bit of a cold, so I'm trying very hard not to have a Theresa May moment. Um, right. Uh, my name is Mark Johnson, I'm from the Open University, and I'm talking about enabling uh, public access to one of our private VLEs. Um, so, oh, hold on. Sorry, I thought I'd have a second screen, but I don't, so I'm just getting my notes up. Okay, so the, at the OU we run several different Moodle sites. Um, we have our main module VLE, uh, which contains all of our main module materials that students use for studying our courses day to day. Um, we also have um, a separate site which contains uh, student resources which aren't uh, related to a particular course and staff resources as well uh, on, a, on another separate Moodle site. Um, and all of these require um, the users to be signed into our single sign-on system before they can access them. We also have um, some other sites like the Open Science Lab and OpenLearn, uh, which are publicly accessible to people on the internet. Um, users who access those can self-register an account with our single sign-on system um, in order to access some other features. Uh, we also have um, a system which we provide to Her Majesty's Prison Service, uh, which is a very locked down Moodle system. Um, so the problem that we presented with uh, was that we have some induction materials which we want to give to students who are applying for one of our courses and um, they won't have an account yet on our single sign-on system. So we can't put them in... Um, one of the systems behind logging because they won't be able to get to it. Um, at the moment, our solution to that uh, was to put them on OpenLearn, which means they can, they're publicly accessible, but OpenLearn is a mashup of Moodle and Drupal, which looks nothing like the VLE system that the users are actually going to be using um, in the real world. So um, it's not an ideal solution for them to be using that and then have to change into using our actual VLE system once they're registered. Um, there's also other resources in the student resources site which we wanted to make publicly accessible in the future. At the same time as this, we didn't want to make everything on the student resources Moodle publicly accessible, um, so we would have to keep, by default, everything that's already on there private, only, to, only available to registered OU users, um, and make new specific content available publicly. In order to achieve this, um, we, uh, we wanted to make the student resources Moodle act more like the Open Science Lab and OpenLearn. Um, the two main changes we made to enable this were uh, changing the authentication plugin we use. So we have two different authentication plugins for our single sign-on system. One of them won't let you access the Moodle at all um, unless you're already signed into the single sign-on system, you'll just get hit with the login page. Um, uh, the other one will let you access Moodle, but then uh, you'll uh, basically, you, you can be redirected from Moodle to the sign-in page and Moodle talks to the single sign-on system to determine whether you're logged in or not. So we changed, um, we changed the student resources website from using the first method to using the second method. Uh, the other thing we did was enable um, auto-login guests uh, which means that if somebody comes to uh, the, the website and they are not currently logged in, they will automatically be given a Moodle session as a guest user. Um, up until this point, all of the users on the student resources um, Moodle site uh, had the same role. It was called site-wide user. It was automatically granted to all users. Um, and they had the permissions which are normally given to a student on a website, things like being able to post to forums, upload content, and so on. Um, we didn't want to do that for everybody, though, so we changed the way that we give, uh, give roles to our users. Um, the users who are actually registered members of the OU, our staff, our tutors, and our students, they got a new role called OU user, um, which, was assigned, uh, which was assigned to them by our authentication plugin. Um, the site-wide user role still exists, but we took a lot of the, uh, the capabilities 
uh, off of that and gave them to the OU user role. Uh, so guests and um, self-registered users who are public users that have registered an account and logged in, um, they will get uh, a much smaller set of permissions which let them, um, you know, will, they'll let them access um, activities and resources but they won't let them do anything to them. Uh, th so the, the key here was that we didn't want existing users to lose any permissions which they already had. Uh, some challenges that we faced when trying to implement this, um, guest users mustn't try and save any data, so um, everybody who is accessing, um, using public access is logged in as a guest, and that means they all have the same user ID of one, so if you try and save something against the current user when someone's logged in as a guest, it'll also display to all of the other people who are logged in as guests. Um, fortunately, Moodle's uh, permission system has already thought of this, um, if you have a, uh, a capability which is marked as being a right capability when it's defined in the code, that means that if you do a has capability call, uh, it will always come back false. So the guest, uh, if you're sorry, always come back false if you're logged in as a guest, which means that if it, you know, you want, it wants to see if you've got the permission to write a new forum post, it'll always say no, even if you've tried to give the guest role that permission. So that gave us the peace of mind that all of the core code uh, should already handle guest access as we expect it to. Um, we just had to look at our own um, activity plugins and we had to make a few modifications there to say, well, if it's a guest, don't show them this button, uh, don't show them these links which are specific to your user, uh, and also add some links which will take them to the sign-on register screen for our single sign-on system. Um, this was a combination of when they were trying to access something which we didn't want them to access to when they were logged in, or if they were trying to access a page which might have a feature in it that saves user data, then we'd show them a message like this in place of that feature. Another challenge, if a user self-registers an account, they now have a user ID, so they can save data, but they're still members of the public. Um, so we don't necessarily want them to be while there's no technical barrier, we don't necessarily want them to be writing stuff on our websites because we, you know, we have no, um, you know, they're, they're not one of our students, we haven't had an agreement with them, they're not going to get into trouble and not get their degree if they start um, posting nasty things on our web pages. Um, so um, basically it's probably advisable not to let these users save data. Uh, so essentially by default the, um, the site-wide user role can't uh, can't post things, can't write data anywhere, but in the cases where we want this to be able to happen, that's managed with um, permission overrides on a case-by-case -case basis, so that might be on a particular website or particular activities, um, they can be set up with these permissions. Uh, another challenge, um, this proved to be uh, a slightly more scary one than we thought. Previously, this server wasn't really accessible on the internet. Um, you tried to go to it, you got a login page. If a bot tried to go to it, the bot got a login page. Um, so we needed approval from our information security team to make this change. Uh, the reason this is a problem is basically this gives us um, a greater exposure to risk from malicious actors on the internet. Um, it turns out actually what we're doing isn't really any different to what we already do with Open Learn and the Open Science Lab, but when you talk to your InfoSec team and you say, well, we've actually been doing this for years, but you just didn't notice, that doesn't go down so well. So uh, we've taken three steps to reduce the risk. First of all, we had our information security team run an automated vulnerability scan against our system. This is essentially what any... Um, any malicious attacker on the internet will do. They'll be running a tool which is hitting our server looking for common vulnerabilities. So before we made it accessible for people to do that, we did it ourselves and fixed any vulnerabilities we found. There was one and it was very small. Um, we also took some inspiration from the way that we've, uh, we've locked down the prison VLE. Um, that has a whitelist of pages which are accessible to users. So in this case, we have a whitelist of pages which is accessible to public users. This just reduces the, um, the surface area um, for attacks. So 
um, if you try and, and access, say, an admin page, you'll just get an error. You'll never, it'll never run any of the PHP for the admin page. Um, uh, this, um, uh, this basically protects us from any as yet undiscovered vulnerabilities, either in the Moodle code or in, uh, in our own uh, plugins. Uh, and finally, we're having a, uh, a full third-party penetration test of our VLE systems to identify any th further security flaws which we might need to worry about. Um, and that's all I have to say. Um, any questions? Questions? I should probably know this, and I don't know if you can say publicly, what was the small vulnerability we found? Uh, I think we were we were displaying a URL on an error page without um, sanitizing it, oh, so right, it was yeah. a possible injection attack, but only on IE, I think, right, because all the other browsers noticed and didn't do something horrible. Thanks. I should also add that since I wrote this slides, we discovered another challenge, which is that. Um, because of the way that we implemented our single sign-on system, um, we had to go back and change some of the integrations because things happened like if you logged out of our single sign-on system um, and then logged back in, you didn't actually have a Moodle session yet. Um, this is because I think our single sign-on system probably works a bit differently to um, the way that Moodle is expecting it to. Um, it actually sits sort of at the web server level rather than sitting alongside Moodle. Cool. Thanks very much.